Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Grace Church's April 19th Sunday service. We're so happy to have you this morning. Thank you for joining us, whether online, wherever you may be watching, or YouTube. Thank you for spending time with us this morning. We expect great things this morning, but in the meantime, before we, uh, after worship, we're going to be taking uh, communion. So get your elements together, get it all together, invite your family together to worship and hear God's word this morning. In Jesus' name, let's worship him. Father God, we thank you for this day, and we just dedicate this day to you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. In our lungs, 
So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Yeah. and mighty, Lord God. We love you this morning. Amen. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power,
we love you this morning. We praise you. We adore you. You are the God most high, Lord God. Oh, Jesus, we worship you this morning. We love you. We adore you. You're such a good God. You're greater than all our situations. Greater than coronavirus. Greater than sickness. Than disease. Oh, we magnify you. You're a mighty God. An awesome God, Lord God. Oh, and Lord, we just worship you. We praise you. We adore you for all that you've done and all that you're doing in the name of Jesus. And we just dedicate this day to you, Father God. We love you, Father, in Jesus' name. I want you to get your elements together. We're going to take communion in just a moment. Oh, Father, we love you, Jesus. being so good to us Lord God amen amen well go ahead and get your elements together as we get ready to take communion this morning what a wonderful time to take communion after just worshiping God with all our hearts and father we thank you we bless you we magnify you for all that you've done and all that you're doing Lord God and as we take communion I want you to get your the bread out and I want you to say this, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Jesus' body that was broken for me. This is my protection from sickness and disease because Jesus passed over, because of what he accomplished at the cross. Sickness passes over me. Disease passes over me. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that I'm healed by Jesus' stripes. Go ahead, break, partake. Jesus took the blood, the cup, and he said, this is my blood, which is shed for me for the forgiveness of sins. I want you to say this. Father God, Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Oh, it's washed me white as snow. Because of the blood, I am free. Because of the blood, I am forgiven. And I thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead. You can partake. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the covenant that we have with Jesus in his death burial and resurrection at this time i'm going to go ahead and have uh, pastor lucy come on up and share some announcements with you and so if you'd like to honey come on up and after that i got some things i want to share about the building and where we're at had a very busy week this week but anyway amen come on up and Well, good morning, everyone. Good to see you again. Um, we miss everybody. And for those of you that are watching us, just we want to say welcome to our online service. We're glad that you're joining us. Open up your hearts to receive today. And we thank you for your continual giving. Um, we're thankful that our doors are still open and God has been faithful and that you guys have been continuing to give online. Uh, through mail. Um, also, we have our online that you can give at graceofaz.com or you can text it at 623-242-5747. You can mail it. Uh, if you want to drop it off here, pastor's usually here during the week. Um, you can always drop it off to him as well. Just wanted to encourage you in something. Um, a scripture I wanted to share with you this morning is Psalms 4211 in the uh, CEB, which is the Common English Bible, says, why, I ask myself, are you so depressed? Why are you so upset inside? Hope in God. Amen. Amen? Hope in God. Amen. Because I will again give him thanks, my saving presence, my God. And then I want to read it to you in the message as well. And it says, why are you down in the dumps, dear <laughs> soul? Why are you crying the blues? Fix my eyes on God. 
Amen? Fix your eyes on God. Amen? Not the circumstances, not the situations, but fix your eyes on God. He wants you to hope in God. Amen? Soon I'll be praising again. He puts a smile on my face. He is my God. Amen. So this morning I want you to put a smile on your face. Amen. Praise Amen. your God. Amen. Because Amen. it doesn't matter what outer circumstances are happening in the world. God already knew about this coronavirus. He wasn't surprised by it. And I know for some of you it might be getting frustrating because it's already been several weeks. And uh, for some of you, you've been at home for quite some time. But you know what? If you began to get frustrated... Uh, as pastors always taught us, that's a sign to show you that you've gotten out of grace. Get back into grace again. When you find yourself frustrated, just say, God, grace me to get through this period and this time. And with your help, I can do it. Amen. Amen. And so we love you guys. Um, you know, we know we've been connecting with several of you guys, just checking on you guys to see how you're doing. Everybody's still healthy and whole and complete. As you see, Pastor and I, Pastor Andrew and his family, we're all healthy. We're all good because we have Jesus on the inside of us. God loves us. He's protecting us. And it was so good to talk to you guys once again. Open up your hearts to receive the message today. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. Thank you so much for sharing that good word. Amen. It is easy to get frustrated and, and, and so forth. Um, you know, God, but God is faithful. God is faithful. Just get back into his grace. And sometimes he asks us to do things that can be a little bit, you know, hard. I mean, for me, especially right now, uh, working on the building, it's, I'm not going to lie to you. If I look tired, it's because I am tired. It's been hard. I've been working some 10, 12 hour days on the building, but it's, you know what? But I get to thinking about, you know, what Jesus went through and everything. I said, this is nothing compared to what Jesus went through. And, and it's for his kingdom and it's for his glory. Every once in a while, I'll stop and, and sit there, look at the garden and think about, you know, the kids and the people that are going to be ministered to in that building. And that's what it's all about. So, so you know, God energizes me and gives me the strength and so forth. My, my honey feeds me. So we're, we, we just keep going. Amen. I know a lot of people, well, but I'm just, I'm tired. I've been resting. Not me, man. We've been working, working, working. And man, if the money keeps coming in, which I believe it will, we're, we're going to keep moving forward. And uh, again, if you're going to give this morning, again, like Pastor Lucy, you can give. I, I, I almost like want to say. Yeah, <laughs> Pastor Lucy, yeah, if you got a stimulus check, give a little stimulus over here. Amen. In fact, I want to give you an update of where we're at, okay? But first, let me show you some pictures of the building and, uh, and where we're at right now. This is uh, looking from the entryway, looking to the right towards the nursery. As you can see, look at all that's been happening. This week's, it was major. I had like four or five, uh, you know, people there working every day, contractors and so forth. Uh, as you can see, the, the, uh, the HVAC is going on. There's the units back, the air handlers in the top, uh, registers going in. That's the nursery you're looking towards from the foyer to the nursery. Here's the bathroom. Go on to the next one. This is looking to the left, looking towards the kindergarten class. And then over here is the big room for the elementary. But notice the ductwork that's in, that's going in. Most of the framing is now in. There's a little bit left over here on the window. But most of the framing almost got it done. Probably another week and so forth. Now this is in the nursery looking towards the, the they're going to have their own sink right here. There's their own little bathroom uh, window. And look at the nice ductwork up there and so forth. You can see that. Look at the piping. See all the piping running, all that copper? Uh, in fact, the, the copper is already in. The rough copper is already in. All that. People don't realize how much goes into a building. You look, you see the walls, and you don't understand all the work. These guys, has, uh, several of us got cuts during the week, and there's blood being shed for this building. <laughs> One guy, I mean, I had to go in there and get him to the stuff to fix him up. And another guy, he cut himself. He went by himself. There was blood on the sidewalk and everything. This thing is blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, and then this is looking from the nursery towards the other side where the storage room is. And notice here, we, li we lost a little bit of wall. So what I'm doing is building a, like a book rack in there that's going to go in about a whole foot. And they'll be able to do like a shelving system. And I'm still going to look into, talk to Esther, whether we want to do maybe some some little seating area here. Might be a cute little um, 
reading area and stuff for the toddlers. Anyway, we'll see. But you can see all that going on. And look at the plumbing, the nice copper plumbing going in there for one of the restrooms. All this, look at all that plumbing going in there. And it takes a while. They've been working at it all week. It's a lot of work. These guys work hard. And then this is in the kindergarten room. You've seen the return air. This one is the return air. This is the duct work. Again, the window. It's going to be, every room is going to be nice and bright. It really is. They're going to be nice. This is the hallway. Now notice the, the hallway's finished on this side. It's got the window. Even the hallway is going to have some natural light and, and so forth, looking towards, uh, looking towards going towards the foyer area. Go ahead and put another one. Now this is the big room, the elementary room. And as you can see, that's looking towards where probably the platform is going to be on this side. Probably put a large screen TV here uh, for, and, and so forth. Put the speakers. It'll be nice. I have enough leftover studs. We might be able to build a platform there or, or maybe a, a, a semi wall or some other things. We're going to look into it. But anyway, you can see all the ductwork going on. This is looking from the back window of the garden looking in. Now you can see all that ductwork there. Uh, they got one more day on the ductwork, the rough ductwork coming in on uh, Monday to finish that off. And then uh, this is the return air from that room. Now that's looking inside from the, the garden looking in. So you kind of see everything that's being done in there and, and so forth. So is that the last one? Amen. So you can see all this work that's been done with just within a week, all the roof plumbing is pretty much done. They're going to finish some on Monday. Uh, HVAC's got to finish some on Monday. I gave a call to the electrical guy, and hopefully he might be starting possibly next week. Once, because now the rough plumbing's done, basically. The HVAC's done. Most of the framing is done. So, but here's where we're at. Here's where I got to talk to you. Look, we didn't just leave the money in the bank. We've been spending the money that comes in. And to give you an example, because right now I asked my Pastor Lucy, how much do we have left on the account? In fact, give me the new total first. Look at the new total. The new total is $169,159.10. Now, that's the new total. That we, that's the money that we've raised from uh, uh, September over, over a year and a half now. That, we, that, we, that the Lord has helped us to raise. But it's just not being sitting in the bank. I just showed you evidence of where the money's been going to. So, but here's the thing. I want to I show you, just to give you, I'm, I don't want to give you details, but I'll give you a rough of where the money's gone. 44000 was spent on the metal building itself. Another forty-four for the concrete foundation and the erection of the building. 13000 uh, for the architect. Uh, 8000 in permits. 6000 so far in contractor fees. Uh, uh, that's basically, I'm, I'm using the contractor's license to, to be the project manager. Um, um, 13000 on the rough uh, HVAC, air conditioning and so forth. Um, 10000 on the fire sprinkler. By the way, it's done. It's already been run all the way across. It already passed inspection. It's ready for the youth and office building. All we're, all we're, we'll have to not get in here anymore. All we'll have to do is just connect to the line. And it's ready to go. So that, that, we paid a little extra for that, but it's done for that building, for the, for the youth one. And then um, 10000 for the fire sprinkler system. That's done and paid for. Uh, we spent about 11000 for all the steel for the inside walls and so forth. Uh, 7000 so far around there for the plumber. Uh, 5000 of miscellaneous things we have to get, tools. And I don't know if you put the feeding the guys there and so forth in there and so forth so on. And then... Uh, uh, and the church, well, thank God the church has been paying for that. But, you know what that, that total leaves us? <laughs> we only have about $8,600 in the bank. We've used it, man. But guess what, though? We're about, I would say, 70% done. We're about 70% done. We're in the last leg here. So we just need everybody to, you know, if you get a good return and you're taxes or whatever, just do what you can. We, we're not asking you for blood or whatever, but just do what you can and let's finish this thing. Some of the other needs we have are going to need at least 15000 or more for the electrical. We got 8000 to get started. I got 8000 I'm going to get the electrical guy started, at least the rough stuff. I, I know the lights and lighting is going to cost about like seven grand. So I estimated about twenty-four to 30000 for electrical, so we need that. Um, 
uh, of course, we need insulation and drywall and painting and the cabinets for the, and then, and then the windows, amen. I held off on the windows, which was good because we needed that air and everything while we were building. So the windows is another, you know, 13,000. So everything that's coming in is to do, begin doing the finish work, amen. So whatever you can do to give, we appreciate it. But I just want to let you know where we're at. I'm not, I'm not panicking. We only got 8,600 left. And we're going to... I'm telling you, one time when we were building this building, we had to have so much money in before the bond issue would be released. And somebody came in and blessed me with six grand that we needed, and that way we could release the money, be released to keep building. God's been faithful before, and He's going to be faithful again to finish this building. All I ask is just do what God leads you to do. We got 8,000 left, but I believe God's going to bring the rest because I estimated about 200. About 200, first my estimation was 260, but I, we were able to cut it down to about 230, 240, but I'm trying to shoot for 225 around there. So you're looking about another 60, 70 or so that we need to finish this project. So believe God with us. Amen? Are you ready to give? Let's do it. Father, thank you for blessing us. With, uh, thank you for everything that's, be done, that's been done and these men that have been working hard on the building. And thank you for your faithfulness, Father. And Father, you've been faithful to us. And Lord, as I believe, as we take care of your business, you take care of our business. You said, seek first the kingdom and all those other things that the world's chasing after will be added to us. And I, Father, I pray that you would meet every need of those that have maybe lost their jobs, that they'll still be faithful to give what they can because they're going to trust you. And I believe you're going to meet their needs. And I thank you for it, Father. Thank you for giving back to us, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So I just want to share, you know, a little bit of accountability. That's where the money, I got the list right here, where all the money, because I was thinking about, where did all the 160, almost 160 go? Well, when you add it up, there it goes. It went here, it went there. It adds up real easily. But look at what we have. We're about 70% done. Amen? Are you ready for the word this morning? Amen? I want you to go to Luke chapter 21. I'm gonna, I don't know if this will be the last part of this series on how to prepare for these end times. But we're just, we'll see where the Lord leads us. This might be the last part. As, uh, I'll just follow the leading of the Lord. But let's pray before we get in the word. Amen? Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we get into your precious word, we look to the Holy Spirit to give us utterance. We look to the Holy Spirit to teach us and bring out the truths that you want us to bring out this morning. And I pray, Father God, that even though uh, it, it's going through video and or online, that, that your word, there's no, there's, no, there's no space in the spirit, Father. Your word is going forth and touching hearts, touching lives. And we just thank you for encouraging us and strengthening us. And I ask for utterance in Jesus' mighty name. So, Luke chapter 21 was the basis of what I've been talking about this, this last uh, three, Sunday, three Sundays. I know last Sunday was Resurrection Sunday, so we diverted for a little bit. But going back to Luke chapter 21, we were talking about that Father God wants us prepared for the coming of His Son, the Lord Jesus. And He loves us so much that He will warn us and let us know about things to come so that we won't freak out. And one of the things I've already covered from Luke chapter 21, uh, verses 5 through 8, we don't have to go there, but one of the things we already covered, number one is, don't, Jesus said, don't be deceived. In these last days, don't be deceived. Why? There's going to be much deception in the last days. Many false Christs, and antichrists. Uh, Satan's number one weapon is a deceiver. So that's how he's going to try to get to people, by deceiving them. So don't be, uh, when Jesus comes in the rapture, you're going to know it. Amen. And, 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 and in the physical return, the whole world's going to see it. Amen. Second thing, don't be terrified. And this is what I ended last with. I, sh I was sharing with you that God was showing me. You can go ahead and put uh, verse 11, chapter 21, verse 11. I believe that this is the next thing on the calendar that we're going to see coming up. Verse 11, there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines. We've seen all those things. And pestilence, come on, we're, we've, we're going through something like that. But notice the next thing I believe God will show me is, is coming up. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. And I gave you the vision that God gave to Oral Roberts before he went home to be with the Lord, that before he returns, God's going to reveal himself to the world to let the world know and the Christians and the Jews that 
it's about to come down. Jesus is about to come back. And I do believe Jesus' return is closer than people realize. So I believe that's the next, next sign. So when you start seeing stuff happening in the skies, don't freak out. Jesus said it would be one of the signs of his soon return. Amen? But now, I want you to go to verse 12, and we're going to continue reading from there. In, in uh, verse 12, he says in verse 12, but before all these things, no, no, he's talking to the disciples here, before all these things happen, you know, all these things that Jesus kind of tells them that before all these things, they're going to lay hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. So Jesus begins to explain to them that uh, a persecution before all these signs that we just talked about persecution was going to come. And let me tell you, it did come to the disciples. It came to the Apostle Paul. It came to the other disciples. So this really isn't necessarily a sign for us, even though the closer we get to the return of the Lord, I do believe persecution will be ramped up. That's why I brought it up. Jesus said, there will be persecution. Amen? And the thing about persecution is, is this. John 15, 20 says that Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. Remember, I, the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. And also, I want you to go to Romans 8.35 though. E even though we might be going through persecution in these end times, remember the word that I said to you. Verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or what? Persecution. Even though we go through persecution, does that mean God doesn't love us? Or distress or trouble? Or famine? Or nakedness or peril or sword? No, look at verse 36. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are what? More than conquerors through him who loved us. Verse 38, finally. Look at verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So, I just want to bring that up. Persecution will be part of what we're going to have to face. But let's move on though. Let's go back to, let's go back to uh, Luke. And let's go down to now, um, in fact, reading it in context, uh, Jesus shares from verse 20 to 24 about the fact that Jerusalem is going to be conquered in AD 70. And it's interesting that he says, if you want to go to verse 24, look at verse 24, go to uh, Luke, and, and they will fall by the edge of the sword, talking about the Jews, after Jerusalem is conquered in AD 70, and be led away captive into all nations. Isn't that what happened in history? The Jews after AD 70 when Titus came and, and destroyed Jerusalem, the temple and everything, and, and, and the Jews were scattered throughout all the nations of the earth, all the way for almost 2,000 years until 1948, and they became a nation again in the land of Israel, and now it's flourishing again. The, Israel was deserted for all those years. And now it's blooming again. It's prospering again. The people are there again. Why? Everything's being restored because Jesus is coming soon. And so notice, it says, and Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles, and that's what happened for 2,000 years, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Notice, Paul talked about a time, this is the age of grace which we live in, when the time of the Gentiles needs to be fulfilled. In other words, when the gospel would go out through all the Gentiles and, and God would bring from the Gentiles a people to himself. But when the last Gentile gets saved, then the age of grace will run out and then the rapture will happen and we will be taken away and then the seven year tribulation will begin where God will judge the world but also prepare his Jewish people to receive their Messiah at the end of the tribulation. So that's, so... Paul says, until all the Gentiles come in, that's what's going to happen. And then God's going to begin dealing with the Jews again, getting them ready for the Messiah. Now, so let's read, though. Look at verse 25, though. Let's go to verse 25 now. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, 
the sea and the waves roaring. Now, Jesus is kind of generally speaking about things that are going to happen in the end times. And I believe this is more into the tribulation. I believe from verse 25 and on, Jesus is now talking about things that are going to happen in the tribulation period. We're going to be gone. We're going to be in the rapture. But there's still some principles and some attitudes that I want to share in these verses that I believe is important to have in these end times. Now notice, next verse. Men, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be, what? Shaken. Now that's a very interesting verse. In these end times, as we, of course, we're not going to see the worst of this because we're going to be raptured, but those that remain, notice what's going to happen to them. I want you to put this in the CEV and the TPT. If you could put this verse 26 in the CEV. Men's hearts failing. People will be so frightened that they will faint because what is happening to the world? Every power in the sky will be shaken. Some of you say, well, I'll wait till Jesus, you know, rapture happens, and then, then I'll know it's true, and then I'll accept Jesus. But listen, you're going to be going through stuff like this. Put this also in the TPT for me. Earthquakes will bring panic and disaster. What men see coming to the earth will cause the fear of doom to grip their hearts. For they will even see the powers of the heavenly realm shaken. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of stuff going on. Uh, again, God is warning people. And I'm warning you. You don't want to wait till after the rapture. Because these are things that are going to happen. Now let's keep reading. And you know, and these, uh, the people are going to faint, man. People are going to freak out during the tribulation when they are seeing these things happen. You don't want to go there. You want to accept Jesus right now. Amen? Let's keep reading now. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. See, that's at the end of the tribulation. Amen? Now, when these things begin to happen, notice what Jesus says. Look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Now, of course, even though this is referring to people during the tribulation, when they see the major stuff happening, it's about Jesus is about to come back at the end of the seven years. He says, look up for your redemption draws near. But we that are still here before the rapture, we're seeing these beginning signs. So I believe this is for us too. We need to what? Look up. Look up. Amen? Why? Because our redemption is drawing near. You have an, In other words, quit looking at the world. Quit looking around and, and, and everything that's happening around you. I mean, yes, you got to focus on things, your job and everything, but lo, don't let that be your main focus. Look up for your redemption is drawing near. Look up because Jesus is coming soon for you. Have an attitude of, of, of instead of looking down, looking up. Why? I'm, why are you looking up? I'm waiting for Jesus to come for me. Amen? You, you need to have that kind of attitude. In fact, I want you to go to Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 15. Notice what it says in Titus chapter 2. Verse, and this, has, this is the attitude that I want, I, want, I want you to see. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to what? To all men. That's Jesus. Jesus appeared. God's grace became a man. God became a man and dwelt among us. Jesus was personified among us. And what does God's grace teach us? Does it teach us to just go do whatever we want? No. Grace teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live what? Soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. See, this is the attitude of looking up. Quit looking at all your problems. Quit looking at situation. You need to look up at your Redeemer. And He trains us to what? To deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. And we should live soberly. Sober means you're not drunk with the world. Some people are so caught up with the world, they're drunk with the world. They're caught up in, in all the things of the world. And God doesn't want us to have that attitude as Christians. We're just passing through. This is not our ultimate home. Amen? We're heaven bound. We're citizens from heaven. So my focus is not all about the, what's happening in this world. Right? And godly in the present age. Verse 13. Here it is. Look at this. Looking. Looking. For the blessed hope. Come on now. How many know Jesus, when he comes in the rapture, that's our, he's our blessed hope. He's going to remove us from the wrath that's going to fall upon this earth, upon, upon those that have rejected God's love and grace. Looking for what? The blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Those of you who are wondering, is Jesus God? Right here, Paul says it is exactly that. Jesus is our great God and Savior. 
Amen? So notice, though, the attitude. You got an attitude of, what are you looking at? Where, where's your mind at? What are you focusing on? Keep looking up, man. Keep looking up. Keep your eyes on Jesus. If you're, uh, if you're feeling down and depressed, that's because you're focusing on yourself. You're focusing on things on the earth instead of focusing, setting your, like I said on Resurrection Sunday, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Amen? Why? Because the Lord's coming back for you. Amen? So have that attitude of looking up. Let's wrap this up. Look at verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people. Listen, zealous for good works. If you want to work, be zealous for good works. Be zealous to do good things for the Lord. Amen? To be a blessing to people. Verse 15. And Paul says, speak these things exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. And that's why I'm sharing these things. Amen? So don't get so caught up with the world. Look up, man, for your redemption is drawing near. So that's another thing that, that'll help you be prepared for his return. But now, let's, let's go back to Luke 21 and let's look at something else. Let's go to verse um, um, 29 first. Let's start with verse 29. Then he said... Then, yeah, Luke chapter 21, verse 29. Then he spoke to them a parable. Look, and he said, look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. I remember on First Avenue when I used to live in my own home, by my window, I used to have a fig tree. And sure enough, I, I remember when I first got saved and, and I was studying about end times. And right, in, right by my window is that fig tree. And I'm reading this parable. Look at the fig tree, right? And so it's like God used it to show me that just, just as you see that it's already budding so early. And, you're, and it's a sign that, hey, summer is near. Summer is near. Amen. You know that, likewise, when you see these things, we already talked about famines, earthquakes, pestilence, all those things. Know that the kingdom of God is near. Amen. Next verse. Surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. I believe Jesus is referring to the generation that sees these beginning of signs and leading to the return of the Lord. So I believe we are the generation that will see Jesus Christ come back. He says it's not going to pass away till all, the, all these things are going to happen in, within this generation. Heaven and earth will pass away, Jesus said, but my words will will by no means pass away. This is a sure word. It's As sure enough as Jesus came the first time, it's for sure He's going to come the second time. Amen? Verse 34. But notice though, here's, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with the, the last point. I, I already talked about don't be deceived, number one. Don't be terrified, number two. Today I covered, understand you're going to be persecuted, number four. Look up. And now I want to talk about number five. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Look at verse 34. Take heed to yourselves, Jesus said, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. And that day come on you, what? Unexpectedly. Wow. That's, that's a very important. Can you put this in the Amplified and the TPT for me in this verse, verse 34? Notice, this is important. Don't... I'm warning you, don't have this kind of attitude in these last days. Some Christians are living this way and they shouldn't be. Take heed to yourselves. This is the, uh, amplified. And be on your guard, lest your hearts be overburdened and depressed. Pastor Lucy was just talking about that. Being depressed, weighed down with what? With the giddiness and the headache and the nausea of self-indulgence. Do you know that self-indulgence can be very nauseous? You can only... You can only do so many things. You can only have so many houses. You can only ride so many rides. You can only eat so many things. And it's, there's, there's more to life than just taking, 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 taking. God wants us to give. Listen, drunkenness and worldly worries and cares pertaining to the busyness of this life. And lest that day come on you suddenly like what? Like a, next part of it. Like a snare? On the next part of that verse, or no? Or like a trap or a noose. See, some people are caught up 
They're caught up in the busyness of life. They're caught up in all their worldly cares and worries and whatever. I know my, some of my grandkids, you know, one of my grandkids said, I don't want Jesus to come back. I haven't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just a teenager. I'm not going to, you know, get, I want to get, you know, get, grow up, get married. And I'm telling you, listen, listen, son, when you, if you, if you see heaven, you will have no complaints. Let me tell you, you have no complaints. There's no comparison to be in God's presence and to be in heaven. Now put this in the TPT, the same verse. Keep a constant watch over your soul and pray for the courage and grace to prevail. Is it verse 34? Are we still there? I mean, verse, uh, 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 yeah, ver yeah, verse 34. Back, back it up. There, there you go. Be careful that you never allow your hearts to grow cold. That's what's happening with some Christians. Their heart's cold to the things of God. It's easy, man. You can get so caught up in the world that, you know, going to church and, and I know, you know, all these things and whatever. And, and, and stop it with this thing. Well, it'll never be the same. No, I bind that in Jesus' name. I believe we'll be back together and things will be normal like they used to be and not this new norm that uh, this, uh, there's a new norm. Well, that's a bunch of baloney. I'm going to be bold. Be careful that you never allow your hearts to grow cold. Remain passionate and free from anxiety and the worries of this life. Then you will not be caught off guard by what happens. Don't let me count, come and find you drunk or careless in living like everyone else. Come on, man. Jesus is warning us. Amen? Now, again, you'll still be saved if you're a, a true believer. You'll still be saved, but you're going to be sorry that, man, here I am wasting my time when I could have been doing things for His kingdom. I could have been a blessing. So caught up and worried about the things of this world when time is running out. What's important? Family, church, the things of God is important. Amen? And so, let's, keep, let's go back to Luke uh, chapter 21. Now let's go to verse 35 and verse 36 of Luke chapter 21. Look at this. Here in Luke 21, uh, we are at verse 35. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. See, it's going to be like a snare, a loose. It's going to be, remember, like the days of Noah, like I talked about, like the days of Noah. Verse 36. Watch, therefore. Here's the last point. Watch and pray. Watch, therefore. And pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Well, of course, now listen, Jesus is talking to people during the tribulation. Us, we're, 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 we're already been raptured. But again, this attitude, though, as we're getting close to the return, is important to watch and pray. Now, Jesus is the one that now made us worthy. Amen? That worthiness that we have is because of His blood, not because of anything you do. But He's talking about uh, 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 tribulation saints and so forth. They will have to stand. They cannot deny Jesus during that time. If they do, they'll end up losing their, their salvation. These are tribulation saints. So they, they have to stand. Or they're going to have to walk and stand and so they won't lose their salvation. But for us, yeah, we're, we've been raptured. But still, is this important to have this kind of attitude? Watch and pray? Of course. Because His return is near. Amen? Watching and praying are attitudes of the heart. You're expecting a soon return so you don't get caught up in the things of the world because you know He's coming soon. How about prayer? Prayer is simply communion with, communing with God, talking with God, whether it's through worship, praise, uh, simply talking with Him throughout your day, or, or praying for people, supplication in the Spirit or in English or in your known language. In fact, what did Jesus say in, in Mark 14, 38? He says, watch and pray. Lest you, enter, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the what? But the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we need to have that attitude of watching, of, of being alert and praying. But let me, let me end with this chapter. I want you to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, because I think Paul here brings this type of attitude of what Jesus is referring to, to the Thessalonian believers. Amen? And so this is before the rapture, so I believe uh, Christians should have this kind of attitude of watching and praying. Notice verse 1, 1 Thessalonians. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. Verse 2. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Right? Verse 3. For when they say, 
peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Notice that he say they, they, they. If you're a believer, he's not talking about you. He's talking about they. They are the unbelievers that, that don't think Jesus is coming soon. And they're just having their, a fun time. They're, you know, oh, it's, everything's peaceful, everything's safe and everything. But no, they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. Not you. He's not talking to you. He's talking to them if you're a believer. Now, if you're not a believer, then he is talking to you. Now, let's keep reading. Look at this. Verse 4. But you, brethren. See see, the, see how he changes it? But you, brethren. Talking to you. Talking to me as a believer. Are not in darkness. See, we should not be in the dark concerning the return of Jesus Christ. Paul said, am I being a dark for them? They don't understand what's happening. But as believers, we should understand the times and the seasons we're living in. God has given us prophecies, signs to let us know we're getting close to the return of Jesus Christ. We are not in darkness so that this day should overtake us as a thief. The day of the Lord should not overtake us as a thief. We're not in darkness. We should know better. Amen, as believers. God's given us his word. Listen, verse 5. You are all sons of what? Light. See, you're not darkness anymore. Sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Amen? Amen? You are a child of light now, a son and daughter of light, not of darkness. Amen? So let your light shine. Amen? Let your light shine for people to see. Let them know. Let them see your life. And, and Jesus said, by your works, it, 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 the good things you do, people see the light of God shining through you. You're the Jesus that people will see in the world. You're, look at verse 6. Therefore, here's what I want to get to. Let us not, what? Sleep. Some, some Christians are, and you could say, spiritually asleep. They're so caught up in the world. Again, uh, that the, again, somebody say, well, you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. Well, I say, you're, earthly, you're so earthly minded, you're no heavenly good. <laughs> Amen? That's what I say. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us, there it is, watch and be sober. Again, why did the word sober? That word sober means self-controlled. It's another way of saying, don't get drunk with the world. Don't, get, don't be... Uh, uh, Drunk with the things of this life. Don't be so filled up with all the cares and worries of this life. Why? Again, Jesus is coming soon. You need to be a watchman. Amen? That, I, I'm a watchman for the Lord. I watch. I'm looking for His return. I'm looking up. I'm looking for His return. Amen? The reason I look at the news sometimes is not to hear all the bad news. I'm, it's to hear, I'm looking for His return. I'm looking for signs of showing that His return is near. Therefore, let us watch. Let us not sleep as others do. But what? Let us watch and be sober. Put this verse in the Amplified for me. Look at the Amplified. says it awesome. Look at this attitude of watching and praying. Accordingly then, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us keep wide awake. What does that mean? Be alert. Be watchful. Be cautious. Don't be going into things you shouldn't be going into. And on your guard. And let us be what? Sober, meaning calm, collected, and circumspect. Amen? So you see, this attitude of being on, 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 you're on watch, amen? You're watching for the coming of the Lord, amen? And you're there to warn people and let them know, as a watchman, I'm there to let people know he's coming back, amen? He's coming back. Now, let's keep reading. We're almost done here. For those who sleep, they sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. Look at verse 8. But let us who are of the day. Amen. We're people of the day, not people of the night. Be sober. Again, that's that word self-controlled. Putting on what? The breastplate of faith. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. And what else? And love. We walk in the love of God because He first loved us. Focus on His love for you and, and you will automatically love others. And then as a helmet, of, as a helmet the hope of salvation. So what do you mean? That helmet covers your head. So we're focused on the deliverance and the salvation that Jesus is about to give us when He returns. Amen. Not only does he save us from sin, but now he's going to save us from this world and, 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 and take us back to heaven. But look at verse 9. For God did not appoint us to wrath. Listen, you do not have an appointment with wrath. God, if you don't know Jesus, God doesn't want you to, to, to receive his wrath. He wants you to receive his son. You've not been appointed to wrath, but to obtain what? Salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Last two verses. Verse 10. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live 
together with him. Whether we, in other words, whether we're here alive or we die, we're going to live together with him. Finally, verse 11. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. Now, these are words to bring comfort and build each other up. Amen? I want to end by reading the last verses, verses 4 through 11 in the message. So I want you to go ahead and put that in the message for me. Friends, you're not in the dark. So how could you be taken off guard by any of this? You're sons of light, daughters of day. We live under wide open skies and know where we stand. So let's not sleepwalk throughout life. There's some Christians that are sleepwalking, you know, you know stuff like that. Uh, like, like, those, like those others. Let's keep our eyes open and be smart. Next verse. People sleep at night and get drunk at night. But not us. Since we're creatures of day, let's act like it. Walk out into the daylight sober, dressed up in faith, love, and the hope of salvation. God didn't set us up for an angry rejection, but for salvation by our Master, Jesus Christ. He died for us, a death that triggered life. Whether we're awake with the living or asleep with the dead, we're alive with Him. So speak encouraging words to one another. Build up hope so you'll all be together in this. Amen. Amen. And so that's what I felt, you know, in the series, I felt the Lord wanted me to encourage you and to also warn you. Notice Paul says that part of it is a warning, but to build you up, to encourage you. Don't get so caught up in this world. Jesus is coming soon. Yeah, be on, you know, be on guard, be on watch duty. Amen. Be, don't be terrified with some of the things that are going to happen. Amen. Get, get, get in the word. Pray. Seek God. Come to church when it opens up again. Amen. Be faithful. Listen to the Word of God online. Amen. Tuesday nights, we've been putting the Ephesians class. One hour every Tuesday night at, at, by, by 6 to 7 o'clock. You can listen to the Word. Amen. Just get built up. Stay built up. Because we are approaching the time of His return. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your Word, Father God. Thank you so much for your word. Oh, Father, I pray, Father God, for everyone that's listening to me. I pray for uh, the people from Grace Church and anybody else that may be watching, believers that are watching. I pray, Father God, that you would help them right now to lay aside the cares of this life, to keep their eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of the faith. You know, as I'm praying, I feel led that there's some of you, that there's some things that God wants you to lay to the side. You know who you are. There's some things that you've been hanging on to and God wants you to lay those things to the side. Enough is enough, man. Those things are, they're, they're hindering you. They're not necessarily sinful things, but they're hindering you in your walk with God. You're, you're focusing too much on that instead of what? Spending that time with Him. And, and whether it's family and with Him and in the Word and praying. And God wants you prepared because there's some things that are going to happen and He needs you ready to be that instrument to reach people and to be a blessing to people. Amen. So I pray for you. Father, I pray for those individuals that you're speaking to, to start laying aside things of the world, the cares, just like your word says, those cares of those life, people that would otherwise faint from all the worries and the cares of this life. Help them, Lord. I pray that you'd grace them to lay those things aside. And some of you, God's called you to just be that watchman in your household and in your family to prepare them for the coming of of the Lord. Amen. And I also want to pray right now, if you're listening to me and you've never made Jesus your Lord, I just want to lead you in a simple prayer and, and pray over you in the name of Jesus. I, I want you to say this if you'd like to receive Jesus. Father God, I come to you as a sinner, really realizing that I need a Savior. I believe that Jesus died on that cross for all my sins was buried and rose again as proof that Jesus forgave me. I receive your forgiveness now from all my sins. Make me a new creation. Come into my life, Jesus. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. And by your grace and faith, I will serve you from this day forward. Thank you for changing me now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please let us know. Amen. You can contact us at graceofaz.com 
or, or you can call us at our, at our phone number and let us know if you've made Jesus your Savior. And also, I pray for anybody that's sick right now. Put your hand wherever there might be any pain or sickness in your body. I'm laying hands on my own arm from working and it's been you know hurting and so forth but I, I speak healing over our bodies and I command all sickness disease any pain that's affecting us uh, I, I speak over sister Linda uh, I speak over her wrists in the name of Jesus be made whole in Jesus name be restored to health in the name of Jesus well God bless you. We thank you so much for, for spending time with us. And again, thank you for being so faithful in your giving and being involved. And believe God with us that we're going to see each other soon. God bless you. We'll see you next time.